Hey everybody, we're out on site today. This is new for us, isn't it Tara? Yeah, it's good to be outside and in the outdoors. Oh, it's lovely. It's a little bit fresh this morning, lovely autumn morning. And so I'm Craig and Tara, we're your hosts today. Um, and we're doing some really exciting uh, painting today. Uh, Tara, tell us what we're going to be painting. Yeah, so today we're going to be looking at our paving and concrete range. Um, used on a you know real versatile amount of surfaces. So, you know, we've got anything from driveways to garage floors paths, alfrescos, all those concrete walkable and sometimes drivable surfaces on the outside of your home. Now we're doing a little entertaining area today. The concrete was poured about 12 months ago, so it's well and truly cured. There's no oxidised powder in this surface, it's pure bare concrete. And that is actually what our paving or concrete paints are made for, Tara. Yep. We're going to go through, Tara will run through a bit of the surfaces later that you can't paint with this product and that's probably just as important as knowing what you can paint and how to do it. But this is really an area where preparation is absolutely key. Absolutely. Pardon the pun, Tara. <laughs> we have to create a key, right, to get a longevity, really great finish for a long time out of it. And that's what we're going to do today. So really, really excited to bring this to you. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge to set up in the situation we are, but we're feeling really excited. Yep. Bear with us. We will see how we go. Remember, we are live. So I reckon what we do is we get straight into it. Let's do the cleaning and let's just show everyone how easy the cleaning and the preparation side of, All right. side of it is. So I'll zip around the other side yep. and I'll talk the guys through the preparation process and then we'll swing back to you after. No worries. All right, cool. here we go, guys. So as Craig said here, we've got a beautiful, fairly new outdoor alfresco area this concrete has been down for 12 months the homeowners have let it cure and just breathe in the outdoors um, without putting any coatings or anything on it um, and now we're going to show you probably the most vital step of using a paving coating which is the cleaning and the etching okay tara here we go oh gee you're into it tara she's got the gurney and this was the uh, concrete area with all the dirt and dust over 12 months just giving it an initial clean so we really do recommend you give your surface an initial clean first. Now, once it's all lovely and gurneyed and blasted, the next step, a air blower or a powered blower vac will actually help remove a lot of the excess water and dirt, blasting it off into the garden areas around. So this just helps the drying process and helps get it as clean as we possibly can. Now, here's an exciting step. Now, at the moment, we're in slow motion, but now we're all good. So this is the citrus-based etcher that's specially designed to etch and open up the pores of bare concrete. Must be used. This is an absolute essential step when we're doing bare concrete. So then we stir, we stir that through. That's actually warm water we're using. That actually helps to dissolve the etcher much quicker. So it's a thorough stir to make sure all the granules are gone. But the etching compound opens up the pores of the concrete, ready to accept the first coat of paint that we are painting on our concrete areas. So it's a very, very important step. I'm doing a very detailed job of stirring there, Tara. It's pretty fantastic. Good mixing, good mixing. All right. So then, once we get that ready, here's another little tip. Get yourself a watering can. Pour your solution into a watering can. This helps spread the etcher compound and mix over the concrete nice and easy. So you'll see us in a moment begin this process. So Tara's now going to spread the compound over with the, you see the watering can use there, and I'm following behind with a stiff bristled broom to scrub the surface and to get that etcher into the concrete to open up the pores of the surface. Now, this step is absolutely essential. Now, normally I don't work that fast, but as we can see here, I've got a bit of speed. But that's it. Once we actually etch it all, leave it for about three to four minutes. That'll help the etching compound open up the pores properly. Then, again, get your high-pressure gurney and blast it all off, cleaning the surface again thoroughly. Basically, you can blast the etching compound and mix into the garden. It will not hurt your plants. <coughs> it is an etcher that is made out of concentrated orange peels, Tara. Concentrated orange peels. So it's very safe to use, very safe for the environment. And we're very thankful that they've now created a safe to use etcher for the environment. But I tell you what, our surface there is starting to look very, very nice. 
You can see Tara loves using that high pressure equipment. So stand back if you ever see her with a gurney. <laughs> and I've just given it another, and I obviously like working with my blower there, just blowing the leaves off and the water off the surface. So um, very essential guys um, that you go through this process. It's not something that can be skipped. It's something that is necessary. And on every can of paving paint, it will give you that direction on the back of it. And that's a close up of uh, just Tara spreading around the etcher compound onto the concrete. But I think we've just about got there with the preparation, which obviously everyone would, if they're not aware, would be aware that we did this previously and we're showing what we did the other day before we came along today to do our first coat. Well, I don't know about you, Craig, but uh, my favourite part is when the preparation is done. Oh, you're telling me. And then we can get into the important stuff. Oh. Firstly, just to recap though, this is our etcher here. So it comes in a one kilo container uh, and mixes into 10 litres of water, preferably warm water. You do get a slightly better result out of it if you can. And that'll give you about a coverage of around 40 square metres. And we always say thereabouts just because you never know the porosity that you have of the surface. Um, it could be, you know, whether it's new concrete or old existing concrete, you just never know quite how thirsty it is. And obviously, you know, that can contribute to depending on what location you are as well. So 10 litres, warm water, good stir, scrub it on and remove it, get that surface nice and clean, ready for painting. Now, if you were going to do a garage floor, you would need to use our Ultra Pave garage floor primer and what this product here does is this guarantees maximum adhesion to a surface that's not only going to be driven on but we want to avoid that hot tire pickup so after you've been driving after a long day on the road like me and Craig your tires are going to be really really hot and you don't want that to pull the paint off so this ensures that it really adheres to that nice concrete surface and gives your top coats a really nice surface to stick to so after you've done a coat of that you would then go and do two coats of the paving paint on pretty well neat. Now, if you had a surface that was going to have a little bit of, maybe it was a little bit slippery or the concrete is a little bit smooth and you wanted to increase the grip resistance on there or the non-slip um, resistance, you would need to use our non-slip additive. So this here, this comes in a 200 gram container uh, this will do about 10 litres of paint. It's about two scoops or 20 grams per litre. And after you've applied this to either our water-based or oil-based paving paint, that will give you a P5 non-slip resistant that rating. That's very technical, Tara, P5. Well, that basically is the Australian Standards non-slip rating system, Craig. But anyone so, that wasn't aware of that, yes, that's, yeah. that's the best you can get. Yep, so really yep. good, you know, if it's being, you know, specced on a, a build or something Absolutely. like that. So we've done our etcher. We now know if we need our non-slip product uh, before we start painting, there's just one more thing that we need to do, which is really, really important. Hey and Tara, yeah. I know I'm just jumping in because that's what we do when we're live. Yeah, mate. Uh, do you want to show them what the primer looks like just so people don't freak out if they ever buy it? Oh yeah, sure. This is actually quite an interesting looking product. Extremely viscous. So it's, its job is to dive in to the concrete surface. So it's very thin, saves the thinning. All right, so you yeah. see it's almost a fluoro color. Yeah bluey green fluoro colour. So just so everyone knows, if you do use the primer, don't freak out when you see the colour. <laughs> Beautiful. Some of us, when we first saw it, were like, whoa, yep. that was, uh, it's quite different. So that really helps with the adhesion and hot tie pickup when using the water base only. So Craig, what is the most important step before we put the paint on? What are we going to do now before we even start rolling it out? We've got to thin it. That's right. We've got to thin it. Yep. Um, would you like me to explain why we need to thin it? Go for it. Yeah. Um, I would just say, look, water-based paints, it's even more essential than oil-based paint because oil-based water-based paint, it's touch dry in 30 minutes in normal temperature, guys. So if it dries really quickly, so if you were painting in the summer and your concrete was really warm, it could be dry in five minutes. Imagine how long, how much time the paints had to adhere. Not much at all. So adding the 20% or 25% or 30% of water, keeps the water base paint wet longer so it can soak in and get a really good adhesion. All right, so that is the reason. Etching and thinning, as one of my colleagues says, everyone wins. So don't forget those two points. That's right. right? 
So now we're going to uh, mix the water now we're into it. it. So we've got about four litres of paint that we've poured into our mixing bucket here. Um, so that's four litres straight out of the can. And here we've got about a litre of water. So Which those are about... Quite still about 20% then. 20% for those playing at home. Yeah, so four litres of paint, one litre of water. It's a little one litre bucket of water. Yep. So easy to buy them in the Bunnings stores and uh, get those to help you measure. I won't put the water on you today, mate. If I know you've done that before. <laughs> It's nice, it's an autumn morning, so it will warm up to a lovely autumn day today. So we've picked a great day. Great day. So it'll, you know, the paint will dry okay. But like if we, as we head into winter, kind of, we, we are recommending don't paint paving paints in the winter. It, the surfaces get really cold. That's right. And you won't get the drying ability. It won't happen. So, you know, with anything, make sure you get a good quality, flat stirrer, mix out water through. Because water's a little bit lighter than paint, so you've got to take a bit of time to make sure it's all thoroughly mixed in. Yep. But this will help keep the paint wet longer. This will help the adhesion. A nice big bucket too, so you don't slop it all over yourself. Yep. So today little we're tips. using the water-based paving paint. We also produce a oil-based paving paint as well. So if you had something where you wanted a little bit more durability, you could go for an oil-based as well. If you use the oil based on a garage floor, you wouldn't need the primer. You would just need to thin the first coat with 10% turpentine, similar to what Craig's done here with the water base. The primer is only designed for the water base, everyone. Um, there is a bit of a chemical reaction if you put the oil base over the water based primer. So don't do that. <laughs> the primer is only for the water base. Just reiterate that. Um, I reckon that's looking pretty good, Craig. It is looking pretty silky, isn't it? Yeah. But it's looking quite reasonably thin, it's got a good flow to it, so that's going to soak into our surface really well as a first coat. Now, are we ready to do our final little test of our prepared surface? Yep, so just one more test that we want to do, just before we start painting, just to make sure that we've done a really good job and that it's really clean and free of any contaminants. And that the surface is actually, like with our concrete it's nice and new, so we won't have any issue today. But um, if you have an older concrete, this is really essential that you test it, probably even before you do your preparation to see what type of, if the surface is nice and stable. Yep. So, just putting down a bit of masking tape, Tara. Yep. Rub it down, the white masking tape's the best. Nice and hard. And then tear it up. Now, you know, a little bit of dirt there, but uh, that's just light, normal dust. There's no concrete particles on that. Do you want to just do that again, mate? Just so we can see again, because you're a bit quick for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> just so we can see Very again. Very good. So get a bit of tape, put it down on our surface, give it a rub. You're looking for the substrate itself if it loses concrete particles. Yep. So it's not about where there's a little bit of dust. This is a, a rough textured formed concrete so it's been made to be a little bit rougher in the look to help with the grip naturally that's why we don't need the grip additive put in this one today but it's basically making sure that there's no heavy particles of concrete coming away because if they are the concrete might be of an age where it actually isn't going to be classed as a stable surface your paint doesn't make concrete a stable surface all right paint needs a stable surface especially paving paints they don't flex, they're made to be rigid. So be aware of that, make sure your surface is nice and stable. Alrighty, so now we'll put our paint into our tray. So we thin this down with 20% water, ready to go for the first coat. Now I've also pre-brushed in the first coat. So you can see how thin that is and that's what the water does. So I'm gonna roll a certain amount of this so you guys can see it in action. This is just it's a brand new roller sleeve we've got here, so it will soak up. Paint soaks up into a brand new roller really, really quickly. But don't you love painting outside, Tara, on a lovely crisp morning? It's great. It's great. It's better than being locked away in a little little room, isn't it? I so just it, so. while you're priming in that roller there, Craig, I just want to talk about what equipment we're using today. So we've cut in using a 63mm Monarch Advance brush. Um, these are really, really good quality brushes. Um, they ensure that you do get maximum coverage with your paint. Um, so that we get a nice durable finish at the end. In terms of the roller, today what we're doing is we're actually using a 12 mil Razorback, uh, which is one of the Monarch ranges as well. Um, because this particular patch of concrete that we're doing uh, has quite a heavy stipple and quite a heavy swirl motion, 
um, we want to make sure that we're using the right roller that gets into all those little nooks and crannies and peaks and valleys in the surface. If you had a smoother surface that uh, was much smoother concrete, perhaps a garage floor or something that had been troweled with a, a much smoother finish, you could use uh, a five mil nap. So something similar to what you would use for doors and trims. Um, it's just a little bit less textured and we'll just give you that little bit less of a smoother finish. Um, but here today we've got this really rough surface. So how's that going on, Craig? You know, this is so easy to put on, Sarah. Like really smooth. Um, the colour that we're using today is half strength um, colour bond wind spray. So it's the house, the other house on the property here has been painted in colour bond wind spray and the guys have gone for a contrast. So they've gone half strength. It is a white base, a white base colour, which means you can get an accurate half strength formulation made. Yep. So this is half strength wind spray. Beautiful. For anyone that um, likes the look of the colour. Really good colour combination with the other, uh, you know, colours that are around the property. So they've used a few Colourbond colours on the outside. Colourbond colours are extremely popular and um, all formulations can be uh, found to make up in uh, our paving paints and uh, our house paints. <laughs> so we'd like to make sure everyone's aware of that. That's right. Now, another little point, Tara. When you're painting everyone, start from a, a section that, you know, I didn't, I didn't paint cut around that, so that's all right. <laughs> I'll get that later. But um, you don't want to paint yourself into a corner, Tara, eh, as they say. Well, we've done that before, haven't we, mate? <laughs> so it's just putting on a nice general coat. You know, don't spread your paint out too far as well, guys. Your paint's what gives you the adhesion. You know, if you try and push your paint too far, you, you lose a bit of that coverage. You want to get nice coverage. You know, this product, honestly, Tara, there is nothing easier than painting a, painting the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It now is you can see just, I don't know if you can see on camera, but over in that top corner there, uh, you can start to see that there's a little bit of a different variation with color and that's exactly the key to show you just how porous this surface is. So where Craig first initially started, he's put it on, the paint start to, started to settle and soak into that section. Therefore, it's looking ever slightly darker. Um, but once this is all put on, you will get a nice uniform finish. It will all blend in perfectly together and particularly on that second coat. So as I said before, we've, we've thinned the first coat with 20% water. Really, really important step with the paving paint. When we come to doing our second coat in two hours time after this is dried, we're not going to thin the product down at all. So we're going to use the product neat, just like a whiskey. It's going to be great. Just like a whiskey. <laughs> and we'll probably need one after this. <laughs> All right, so how about a little bit of a recap then, Tara? Run through from the start to finish there what we've, what we've done today, what we've shown. Yep. Um, actually, rather than a recap, why don't we go through some of the surfaces that we can't paint? All right, some of the surfaces that we can't paint. So uh, for starters, we can't do stenciled or stamped concrete. So any of those crazy pave type products that you might have on your driveway or your paths, those are not suitable for this product to go over the top. And the reason is, is that they're usually sealed with a xylene based sealer and these products won't coat over the top of it. The other thing that we do get that's really common is oxidized concrete. So maybe you've had some concreting done, done at your home and you've had some color added to the concrete. Um, that is called um, basically an oxide, which is a, a colored powder that goes into the concrete. And what that can do is that can leave an ever so slightly chalky finish to the surface, um, which is really hard to get paint to stick to because that just keeps continuing to chalk over time, doesn't it, Craig? Yeah, the chalk, the chalk actually pushes the paint off the surface. So how we spoke about earlier about a, a stable surface, the chalk, the oxidised powder makes the surface not stable. Yeah. So the actual paint adheres to the chalk, the chalk's loose in the top part of it, the paint just peels away. That's right. So I can't tell you how many times I've been at the people's places when they've painted that. Do not paint coloured concretes. Yep. Okay, let's just... And if you want to paint your concrete, which, you know, when it comes to the water base, well, this is another point that we actually haven't made. I don't think Tara's made this point, but water-based paving paint lasts a lot longer 
under UV than what the oil base does. That's right. So when you do your paths outside, much better to use the water base. Easy to use, but it will actually last you a lot longer. Mm. So if you go through the preparation of thinning it out properly like we have today, you'll get a much longer life out of the water base. And let's face it, no one wants to be painting every two to three years. They'd much rather be painting every six, seven, eight years. You know, I, I, I don't want to be out here every summer painting uh, a concrete area. Yeah, that's and right. And having to refresh it. And the, um, the water bases just have a much better longevity with the UV. This is going to look great when it's finished. It's here. I hope the owner's happy. <laughs> <laughs> so... So anything else you'd like to go over again, Tara, when it comes to... Oh, I suppose, I suppose we can, uh, you know, go over those two points again. That thinning, yep. the thinning is massive. These things are actually on the cans. So what about if we had a surface that had some previous paint on it? What would we do in that case, Craig? Oh, geez, that's a good question. If we had a previously painted one, we still have to create a key because when paint cures, and when a paint cures, it's fully dried with no moisture in it. It's actually then resisting anything from adhering to it. So when people just put another coat of paint over old paint, any old paint, it sits on top. Big chance it'll come off. Um, even with paving paints, you've got to give them a bit of a sand. You've got to open up the pores of the old paint so the new paint can adhere. So it's sanding. Yep. You've got to sand it. And, you know, honestly, that freaks a lot of people out. There are equipment that you can buy in your stockists that you can put on a roller pole and you can basically mop the surface like sanding. So I would suggest very strongly go and talk to your stockist about some of those tools that can make your life easier when it comes to repainting old paving paint or painting new paving paint like what we're here today. Yeah, that's right. But um, she's looking pretty good, Tara. Pretty easy to use. Yep. Going on nice and smoothly. You know. I think that's great. Well, Craig, I think we might let our viewers go and we might continue on and finish the rest of the job for the day. Yeah, good What stuff. do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. So just remember, etch and thin, everyone wins. Make sure your surface is nice and clean. As you can see, it's taken Craig no time at all to put a coat on these ones here. He's mm. even stepped in the paint and got paint on his boot. boot there we go. <laughs> just to finish it off <laughs> guys it's been really good bringing this to you myself and Tara this is one close to our hearts because we do deal with a lot of people where they just miss steps so really thoroughly investigate what you have when it comes to concrete areas and paving areas before you just bang a coat of paint on because it's probably not that easy yeah and if you if you if you think of taking a shortcut that could be turn into something that becomes a real nightmare and we don't want that so we want to make sure you guys are really doing the correct preparation first so totally bare concrete that's what our paving paints are for let's get out there and totally transform our homes because where they are painted i mean look at that color this looks so much better than the bare concrete so you know happy days that's right join us next month we're going to be covering rust guard we're going to be on the road again i can feel it that's right all right, thanks, Tara. Thanks, mate. See All you right. next time. See you guys.